So what I was going, what, what I'm going to go through to tonight is when you think about the question of where are the aliens, um, which I get asked a lot. Um, this is like the Fermi paradox. Where are the aliens? And um, I've not seen any evidence that there are aliens on Earth. A lot of people think there are aliens on Earth, and I'm like, great, I'd like to meet one. Um, you know, for a while there, when I was getting my green card and everything, it said alien registration card. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, this, this question of where are the aliens is, uh, I think, a very profound one. Because uh, I'm aware of no evidence of aliens whatsoever, which means that I think we're probably alone. Um, and <clears throat> if you look at the history of Earth, like how long has Earth been around? If, assuming that physics is correct, uh, the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Uh, Earth is about four and a half billion years old. When you think about the how, lo how old is civilization, I think the, the right measuring point for civilization, in my view, or, or a, a good measuring point, would be the advent of writing. So the first writing uh, is generally considered to be the ancient Sumerians. Uh, where are they now? They died out. But the, about 5,500 years ago, it was archaic pre-cuneiform. Pre in fact, I suggest um, it's like an interesting rabbit hole to uh, read about the history of writing. Um, so if you consider, say, like, okay, civilization, if, I think if you don't have writing, you kind of need writing for civilization. So, um, so it's only been around for like a little over 5,000 years. Out of four and a half billion years that Earth has been around and the 13.8 billion years of the universe, so we're, all of human civilization is basically the blink of an eye. It's like a... It's a fraction. It's almost. It's nothing. Um, and I think that that probably means that that consciousness is incredibly rare um, and perhaps fleeting. It may not last for very long. Because um, otherwise, we would. I think we would have seen aliens. Some kind of sign of aliens. I think the most likely explanation is that. Consciousness is, is uh, so rare that, that you, 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 it, and, and does that consciousness actually extend to another planet? Does that consciousness extend to uh, another star system? I mean, ultimately, if we're able to become a, a space-faring civilization, a multi-planet species, and ultimately a, a multi-stellar species and go out there and explore all these star systems, I think we may find that there are many long-dead, one-planet civilizations. Um, we, and as you've heard me say before, we don't want to be one of those lame one-planet civilizations. I mean, we want to be a multi-planet civilization, ultimately be a multi-stellar civil, civilization, be out there among the stars. Like, you know, make science fiction not fiction forever. Um, can make Star, Star Trek real. Um, that's uh, so. That's why I think that there's 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 a high urgency to making life multiplanetary. Um, because this is the first time in Earth's four and a half billion year history that it's been possible to extend life or consciousness beyond Earth. And we've got to do that while civilization is still strong. So that's, that's, that's the overarching goal of the company, is extend life sustainably to another planet. Mars is the only option, really. And uh, to do so, uh, ideally, bef before World War III, or some kind of bad thing. The, the key thing is that we, we need enough people and enough tonnage on Mars uh, such that Mars can survive and continue consciousness uh, even if something were to happen to Earth. Um, now, I still think, well, obviously, we, 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 I'm not talking about ab abandoning Earth or anything like that, and we want Earth to be as good as possible for as long as possible, but there are certain things that may be outside of our control. So, so we want to just get, get uh, Mars to be a self-sustaining civilization as quickly as possible. And I, I think this can be done 
in around 20 years. So, and this, this you know, giant Starship factory that we're building is obviously key to that. And the launch sites that we're building here and at, and at the Cape and elsewhere in the future will be key to that. So, so let's just go through that. So we've, um, we've made tremendous progress from flight one to flight two to flight three. And we got uh, flight four coming up. And uh, with flight four, we should, uh, if we get, you know, if fate smiles upon us, uh, we'll get through the high heating regime um, and uh, s smash into the ocean at a controlled spot. Um, and then uh, hopefully be able to also do this with the, with the booster, uh, land on a, essentially a virtual tower. Um, if, if the landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. Yeah. That, that, that's very much a success-oriented schedule, but, uh, <laughs> but it is in the realm of possibility. Um, but I would say like the, the odds of us actually being able to catch the, the booster with the Mechazilla arms this year, I think, I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, knock on wood, but I think the odds of actually catching the booster uh, with, with the tower, probably like 80, 90% this year, um, which is insane. Like actually, when we first talked about it, it sounded so batshit crazy. <laughs> We're going to have a giant, it's like literally bigger than Megazilla from this movie. <laughs> uh, that you'd catch like, the, like the, the biggest flying object ever made with mechanical arms out of the air. But we're going to do it. So, yeah. It may not work, you know, necessarily the first time, but it, you know, it will work. Um, so really, a Starship is, is really the key to making life multiplanetary and preserving the light of, light of consciousness. That's what it's all about. And um, it, it may end up being the most important thing that, that we ever do. I think that you're, you're, like the light of consciousness is like this, this tiny candle in a, in a vast darkness. And th that candle has only been lit for a very short time and it could easily go out. So we obviously want to preserve that, that, the tiny light of consciousness on Earth, but extend it to Mars and then ultimately to the rest of the solar system and then s start going to other, other star systems. And, uh, and then there's recovering and reusing the ship. The ship will take uh, longer. Um, so the ship, I think we'll want to have uh, at least two consecutive successes of a given design uh, that uh, land at a specific point in the ocean or smash into a specific point in the ocean before we try to bring it back to the launch site. Because um, we, do, we do not want to rain debris over uh, Mexico or the US. So uh, my guess is probably next year is when we will be able to reuse Starship. But I think it's, it's, I think it's highly likely that this year we will bring Starship to, or the ship, the ship side of it, to a controlled point in the ocean, um, and have it basically land on a virtual, uh, virtual tower in somewhere in the in the Pacific or the Indian Ocean. And we've already proven that we can do the final phase of landing. So coming from sort of a belly-first position to uh, rotating the ship and landing vertically, uh, we proved that right here. So what, we, just really, we just need to be confident that we can get through the high heating portion of, of, of reentry uh, reliably, and then we will bring the ship back and it will land on the tower as well. And we're going to build more Mechazillas. So there's going to be two launch towers here, and, and, I think, and then two launch towers at the Cape as well. Uh, so we'll have uh, four launch towers for uh, for Starship, probably you know by sometime next year. So uh, we're aiming to have the first Cape uh, launch tower and launch system operational around the middle of next year. 
Um, and that'll be important for launch uh, azimuths that are uh, sort of fly over land. Um, <clears throat> You can just imagine all of these starships waiting in orbit for the planets to align, and then this gigantic star fleet taking off from Mars. All right, so we're actually going to do this. Um, and uh, when you think about where this started out, this was literally just a, like a, a sandbar um, where we're standing right now. And now look at what we've done here, and uh, we've gotten three flights off of Starship, and we've got a fourth, fourth one coming up. And uh, we're building a gigantic factory that will be able to output a massive number of ships. So it's surreal, but it, but it's real. Um, so we're actually going to do this. We're going to take humanity to Mars. And uh, I'm confident you can do it. So.